All right, welcome to this week's virtual story time. I'm Miss Isabel. I'm here at the Graves Library in Kennebunkport, and this week we're going to talk about bugs. No reason for it, really. I'm just kind of sick of summer themes, and I found two books that I really liked and wanted to read. So before we really jump into all of our autumn-themed books, we're going to start with If Only by Mies Van Hout. And there's a very thoughtful bug on the cover. If only. Our publisher this week is Pajama Press, and this book was translated from Dutch by David Colmer. If only. The child thought, if only I were a butterfly, then I could fly everywhere. There's the child. There's many different colored butterflies. The butterfly thought, if only I were a stick insect, then I wouldn't stand out so much. You can see the butterfly pretty clearly, but where's the stick insect? They're pretty good at hiding. That's that stick insect right there. The stick insect thought, if only I were a whirligig beetle, then I could swirl across the water. And there's that beetle. And there's the stick insect hiding again. The whirligig beetle thought, if only I were a firefly, then I'd never be scared of the dark. And it is pretty dark here. And he does look a little bit scared. But the firefly seems quite happy. The firefly thought, if only I were a bee, then I'd always have friends with me. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of bees. Maybe sometime I'll count how many bees there are on this page. The bee thought, if only I were a spider, then I could do everything myself. And there's the spider spinning its web. The spider thought, if only I were a ladybug, then everyone would think I'm adorable. And the spider's looking a little sad there, but there's lots and lots of ladybugs. The ladybug thought, if only I were an ant. Then I'd be strong and tough. And those ants are carrying quite a bit as they go marching on. The ant thought, if only I were a snail, then I wouldn't be this busy. And there's some snails just hanging around. I think this upside down one here is pretty funny. The snail thought, if only I were a grasshopper, then I could jump over things. You can see the grasshopper flying through the air and the snail is upside down.
The grasshopper thought, if only I were a dragonfly, then everyone would stop to watch me go by. And the grasshopper is thinking, and the dragonfly is flying. The dragonfly thought, if only I were a child, then I could run, jump, laugh, play hide and seek, count, build houses, and so much more. Think about all the things you can do as a child. For one thing, you can look at books. Bugs aren't big enough. And that's the end of the story of If Only. But there is a pretty cool glossary of creatures in the back that gives a little bit of information about each of the bugs that we learned about. There's also an art project at the back if anybody's interested in checking that out. All right, If Only. And to continue with our bug theme, we have another one that I stumbled across called The Bugliest Bug. And I don't really know what bugliest means, but I think we might find out. And the author is Carol Diggory Shields, and it was illustrated by Scott Nash. And you can see on the title page that I think it's been signed by Scott Nash, and he drew a little bug, <laughs> kind of a big bug. So that's the title page for The Pugliest Bug, and the publisher is Candlewick Press. All right. Do you have six legs? Do you wiggle or crawl? Could you be the bugliest bug of them all? Look at all the different bugs. Do you recognize any of them? I see a bee and a butterfly. They look a little different from the last book, but you can still see that they're bugs. A contest for insects. News buzzed through the air. Bugs slithered and swarmed from here and from there. Down by the pond, young damselfly Dilly said, I'm a plain bug, neither clever nor frilly. But while I won't win, I would still like to see who the bugliest bug turns out to be. And there's Dilly. She's blue. We're all heading to the contest. Fireflies lit up the stage with their lights. Glowworms glowed softly, a beautiful sight. A lacy white curtain hung from the trees and billowed and swayed in the warm evening breeze. The clearing was humming with bugs of all sizes. Flittery, jittery, hoping for prizes. It's a big crowd. There were more bugs than Dilly could ever have dreamed, from tiny no to fat termite queens. Some had great pincers, some had proud horns, some looked like branches or flowers or thorns. Just like that stick bug, looks like a stick. They're all showing off what they can do. And they all do something different. Dilly crept closer as the biggest judge grinned. Sweet little bugs, let our contest begin. How odd, Dilly thought. Those judges have wings that are tied to their backs with gossamer strings. Looks like maybe their wings aren't quite real. Don't look like anybody else's. Hmm. Click beetles clacked and whirligigs whirled. Crickets sang solo and swallowtails twirled. A ladybug curtsied, tumblebugs flipped. The judges applauded, then licked their lips. Hmm. Something suspicious.
The judges looked shifty, so Dilly kept squinting. Then, sure enough, she spied their fangs glinting. She yelled, we've been flim-flammed, bamboozled, distracted. Those judges aren't insects, she cried. They're arachnids. And for those of you who don't know, arachnids are spiders. And spiders tend to eat bugs. The big judge hissed softly, too late for you all. It's curtain time now, and it started to fall. Folks, he continued, we liked all your acts, but we think we will like you much better as snacks. The bugs froze in fear. This looked like the end. There's a big net coming down on them. This looked like the end. But Dilly thought quickly and shouted out, Friends, there's only one way to get out of this mess. Each insect must do what each insect does best. So charge yelled a squadron of swift soldier flies and bombardier beetles took to the skies. Dilly whirled up through a hole in the net. It's working, it's working. We'll beat those creeps yet. The army ants marched and the mantises prayed. Keep fighting, called Dilly, and don't be afraid. Then the stink bugs united, gave off their worst smells. P.U. We give up, the spiders all yelled. Looks like a stinky cloud there. They scuttled away. Hurrah, cried the bugs, giving high sixes and fuzzy warm hugs. The cicada piped up. It's time for a speech. Attention, my friends, he said with a screech. And the spiders are off. And everyone's celebrating. The contest is over, and we have a winner. Without this young damsel, we all would be dinner. She might be young, and she might be small, but Dilly is the bugliest bug of us all. And that's the end of The Bugliest Bug. And I bet The Bugliest Bug wasn't who you expected. All right, everyone, thank you for coming to Bug Week. I really enjoyed reading those books. They were pretty great. So I will see you next time for story time. And until then, have fun.